Butterflies. This is your girl, Sharon K. Griffin, a.k.a. Madam Butterfly. I hope that you are flapping your wings on this Sunday. Why? Because this is a day of relaxation. This is a day of football. This is a day of, for those who go to church, that you're online or you're going to the physical building. But this is the day to celebrate. Why? Because I have B.J. Higgins from Dallas Roosevelt High School. He is number seven and he is a quarterback and he is who's who. And guess what? Colleges are even looking at him now. So I want to welcome to my stage B.J. Higgins. Let's give him an applause. Hey, BJ. Freedom. How are you, sweetie? <laughs> I'm doing good. <laughs> That's good. So we know that you are number seven. Number seven means uh, completion. Did you know that? Yes, ma'am. Spiritually? <laughs> All right. What, what are you completing? <laughs> I, I don't really know yet, but I like the number. Okay, I like that number too. I also like uh, number eight for new beginnings. So anyway, I was telling my audience that you go to Dallas Roosevelt High School and you're number seven, you're the quarterback. How does yes, it feel to be the quarterback? Because I know all the girls are like, APJ. <laughs> uh, it feels good. Okay. Feels good. So you're like a local celebrity. Like I've been reading some things about you. I know that um that you had the winning touchdown on Thursday. So that's exciting. How does that make you feel when like everyone is applauding you, especially at such a young age? Uh, it feels good. I can't really describe it, but like, just like in the moment when everyone's clapping and cheering, it feels really good. It makes you feel like, made me feel proud of myself. Okay. So how do you uh, feel when they're booing you? Uh, you just have to look through that. Like, I try not to pay too much about it, but it happens. So, just kind of does it on. does it hurt when you know one minute they're glorifying you, and then the next minute because you may have done something that they don't like, or you know you missed a, a pass? Like, how does that make you you feel? Like, I know you say you have to look past it, but all of us enjoy being celebrated? Uh, well, as a quarterback, that's what you have to do. Like, when you're losing, it's on the quarterback. If you're winning, everybody's going to start saying it's the quarterback. Like, it's just something you have to – it comes with the position. Okay, okay. I get that. I mean, so you have to have thick skin pretty much. Um because one moment you're celebrated, then the next minute it's like, whatever. But anyway, who are you? If if we took away football, who is BJ? Uh, well, I have to describe myself. I would say I'm uh, pretty funny. Okay. Uh, I have a good personality. I uh, like hanging out with my friends, like going to movies, okay. uh, TV, stuff like that. Cool. I have to say that you're very humble. You have a very humble spirit. And your parents did a great job, a phenomenal job uh, raising you. And I can tell just by your demeanor um, and how when you came on, you weren't cocky. You're just like, hey, Miss Griffin, you know, and I appreciate that, especially in today's society where so many people, not only young people, but people are disrespectful. So did your parents train you like that? Like, how'd you become so 
respectful and humble? Uh, our parents definitely got me right. They definitely got me right. And I just, I just know better also. Okay. From your upbringing and just your family values. Yes, ma'am. That's beautiful. Now tell me what made you get into football? Like, I know you've been playing since a very early age. What age? Like five or six? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm five or six. Okay, so what has made you to continue in that path all these years? You're 16 now, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Oh, uh, I just really started to love the game. Like, I know I, I started playing uh, ball, then I switched to basketball, and then I just okay. basketball wasn't really it. So I just stuck with football, and then eventually over time, I just began to really love the game. And okay. I just I couldn't okay. I couldn't see myself not playing football. So you can hoop then. <laughs> you play football better than you hoop. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. Well, you know what? I have to say, I talk to a lot of players, right? I talk to a lot of um, NFL players, ex-NFL players, and basketball players, NBA, ex-NBA. And I noticed that the football players are more humble. Uh, with the, the NBA, it's a little more of an arrogancy, but the NFL is like, they're pretty cool guys and, you know, they remind me of you, but they're older. Why do you think that NFL players are more humble than NBA players? Uh, <laughs> I really don't know why NFL players are more But what are, you, what are your thoughts, though? Because uh, there's just like this happiness with NBA. Yeah. And the grind is different in football. Like you you grind for basketball, but the grind for football for like is way different. Okay. Is it harder? Yeah, it's harder. Okay. Um now I was talking to your mom. And she was telling me your schedule. And I was fabricasted about your schedule. I was like, okay, this is very interesting. So tell my listening audience, like from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, what's going on? Because I couldn't imagine the life that you have as a young person. Uh, right now with online school, I wake up at six in the morning. Well, I wake up like at five, and I go to uh work out at six in the morning. And then okay. when I get back from there, I come home, take a shower, and then by then I have like ten minutes to just rest. And then I hop on online school from nine to like whenever my last class is. It depends. And then after that, I practice at four thirty to like. 7 30 and then when i get home if i have homework i have to finish my homework up and then get a shower and wind down that's my day every day so far right now what what time do you go to bed uh on a good day probably yes. like 11 30. and then you start over all over again at five wow yes, you're really committed to the game. And I'm sure that there's been hard times, especially right now with COVID. Um, how were you able to pivot um, your course with the change of not being around your friends all the time, not going to the physical school building, um, the stress of not knowing if you're going to play at that time. And even now, because I mean, yes, you guys are playing, but we don't know what's going to happen. How do you deal 
with those stressors as a young pe person, excuse me? Uh, well, when uh, it first came, I couldn't do anything. It just gave me more time to get my fright and just keep working out. And then without having the football season, that, uh, I don't know what else. Like, I was, it hurt me. But uh, the downside is he, they had held everybody back in Dallas. So we really should be, like, three games in right now. But they gave us, they finally gave us a season. But since we're so far back, the team we play, the team we play, they have uh, three games already under their belt. So kind of gives us a disadvantage, but at least we get to play because they tried to crumble it in. So. Okay. Did you feel at any, at any point that you were depressed because you couldn't play at that time or you were feeling low? I was definitely feeling low, but uh, – it was a pandemic, so nobody nobody wanted to get sick because people were dying from it. But I was definitely feeling low. How do you feel right now that so many people have died? Um, over 200,000. Does that frighten you um, as far as going out in the community, playing football? How do you feel? Uh, it does, especially since, uh, like, that it was really affecting older people, and I have my grandparents, and I know I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what to do if that happened to them. And like, it, uh, every time I go out, I have to worry about it. So I've been taking my vitamins, okay. all that stuff. Make sure I don't get it. Do you wear your mask when you go out? Of course. It's Got you. Now, I know that I'm sure you talk to your friends um, regarding the pandemic. How are they coping um, with the pandemic as well, whether they play football or not? Uh, a lot of people are kind of doing like the same thing I have. They just have to be sitting inside the house. They can't really do anything. So. It's just been chilling, I guess. Does it get boring? Really can do. Does it get boring just yes, sitting in the house? Yeah, it definitely gets boring. So how do you focus or keep your mind right um, where you don't sink into a depression or, you know, stay in a low place? Because a lot of times... Um, we look at children, but we don't. We look at children in the aspect that they don't get depressed or they don't feel low. But the reality is that so many children do feel low. Um, and just doing my campaign called "I See You," and it's a suicide prevention campaign that now young black people between the ages of eight and 12 are committing suicide in record numbers. So how would you encourage someone to, to stay focused and to stay out of that low place? Because as adults, sometimes we don't understand what you guys are feeling, but young people can reach young people. So how would you encourage young people to, to stay the course and to stay focused and keep their eye on the goal? Because that's so important these days, especially because we don't have that emotionalism, the emotional intelligence. So again, the question is, how would you encourage a young person to stay focused and stay happy and stay positive? Uh, I tell them to try to find what I really like to do. I try to find something I could take their mind off of whatever is going on, and uh, just try to relax. Even though it's like in a hard time, just try to relax and calm down and really think about, like, really think about what's going on. Okay, I think that's good. Um, 
if you had to speak to adults, what tools would you give them? Because adults get low too, you know, and a lot of times parents try to be their, their best for their children. But how would you encourage your parents if you saw, you know, that they were getting low or things were taking place in their life? I'll probably say, uh, try to pray about it. Ask God for any uh, questions that you're having and just uh, keep going. Like, just try to take your mind off of it. Got you. Who is God to you, yeah. BJ? Since <laughs> you spoke about God. You know, a lot of young people don't talk about God these days. So who is God to you? God is everything to me. Nice. You know, when I talk to athletes, that's one of the first things that I tell them to keep God first. Why? Because with God, you you can't go wrong. You know, even when things don't pan out how we think they should. Um but to just keep your eyes on God because God will lead and guide you. So that's a great thing that uh, you keep God first. So what are you missing about school? Like being in the building. Uh, I miss the one-on-one -on -one time with my teachers. Like if, I, if I'm struggling with something, yeah. being able to just go to my teacher and sit down with them and get that one help is uh, something that I miss. Okay, what's your favorite school subject? Uh, probably physics. Physics? You take physics? Oh my goodness. I avoided that course. Um, I wasn't good in science. I was great in math. Loved math. Um, maybe because I like the teacher, but the sciences, I um, I couldn't get with until I got in college. And I think having children at an early age, for me, made me get through science and made me appreciate science. Um, but in high school, I couldn't do it. That was not my priority. I was into boys. And I was into talking. <laughs> Do you have a girlfriend? No, I don't have one. You're not allowed to have a girlfriend. Uh, no, I can. I just, I just don't have a girlfriend. You don't know how to date. <laughs> Did I throw you off guard there? A little bit. Why? Because uh, my mom is right here. Tell us, say hi. Hi, Regina. Hey, how are you doing? How are you I'm doing? good. I'm good. <laughs> so, since you're allowed to stay. Thank you for having me on here. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so, so, BJ. What type of girls do you like? Uh, I like black girls. Okay. <laughs> Is that because you have a black mama? <laughs> yes? No? no maybe. He, can be, he, can, he, can, he can talk about it. He's going to try to smile and look at me. <laughs> I know. Come on, BJ. <laughs> you don't want to talk in front of your mom. Am I am I embarrassing you? Uh kinda. I'm sorry. I don't want to embarrass you. Let's talk about football. Okay. Yeah. All right. So regarding football, I know colleges are now looking at you. Do you want to go to any particular college? Uh, I don't really have a 
the college right now, but I just want to get uh, some more colleges looking at me, get my name uh, more out there. Okay. So what are you going to do to get your name out there? Uh, just continue working hard, continue doing what I do, and just uh, keep balling out on the field. Okay, okay. Do you ever feel that there's a lot of pressure on you to perform on the field? Uh, no. You do? How does that make you feel having so much pressure? Because I couldn't imagine having so many people watching me and I had to perform. I had to be great in the moment. Like what I do is different. Yes, is it's a type of performance, but I'm here by myself and I'm streaming. So how does it feel when you're on the field and that pressure is there? Uh, I, I know a lot of eyes are looking at me, so I try not to, I really, I try not to focus on it too much. I just try to stay on my head and uh, okay. just think about the game. I don't try to think about the other stuff. On the so I have someone in my comments and it said, they said that I'm pushing you into the corner with my questions and that I'm making you feel uncomfortable. Am I making you feel uncomfortable, sweetheart? No, I'm not uncomfortable. Okay, so to my, my guest who made that comment, you heard it from the horse's mouth. BJ isn't uncomfortable. So thank you for your comments. So anyway, BJ, <laughs> um, regarding football, do you plan on going pro? Uh, yes, ma'am, that's the goal. That's the goal. Okay. So what if you had the opportunity to go pro before you finish college? Would you take that opportunity? Uh, or would I you finish college? But I think I would take the opportunity, but then when, later on I would uh, go back and finish out my college and get my degrees. That's awesome. Now, I have to encourage you with this because I speak to so many athletes. Um, a lot of them do not plan when they're in the game. That's NFL, NBA. What I want you to keep in mind is to brand yourself, okay, while you're in the NFL, to start some businesses while you're in the NFL. Don't spend all your money on like these big lavish things that you can't pay for right out. Um, become that speaker, write some books, things like that, because so many of the gentlemen that I talk to are now trying to redevelop themselves. So when you go pro, have a plan. Um, Hire someone that can help you to focus because a lot of times with agents and managers, they're operating in the right now for you. But then you have life after football and you have to make sure that your life is thought out and also planned out. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. And also, I know that you have great parents, so I know they're going to make sure um, you're okay. But I have to ask you, so what do you think about being a young Black man right now with police brutality? Uh, I have to think about it. It's, it's definitely... It's definitely hard at times, and I know, like, when I go out the house, I have to worry about me and my friends. Not that we're bad or anything. This what's going on right now. You, you just don't ever know. It could be that one cop who just woke up wrong, and I'm out. And anything could happen. How does that make you feel, being a young black man, where you don't know? 
from day to day if you're going to meet that one bad cop or a group of bad cops? How do you handle that mentally? Uh, it's definitely scary, but I just try, I don't know, like, I just communicate with my parents, let them know everything where I'm going at all times. So just in case something does happen, like my parents know where I, where I am or anything happens, I let them know. Right. I know for me, I have a, I have a tracker on my phone that my children and my husband they know where I am at all times, especially for safety. Um, but even as a black female, I have to say that sometimes when I see cops, I cringe, you know, not all the time, but sometimes, or sometimes when let's say a, a truck with a certain flag is next to me, I cringe. So I can't, Phantom being a young black man and not knowing, you know, if I'm going to meet the wrong person on that day. Um, what do you think should happen? Do you think we should have police reform? Uh, what do you think should happen regarding how blacks are treated? Um, by the police? Uh, it's definitely starts with voting, but okay. I think police, police should uh, have reform and like go get more training and stuff because what's happening is just doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me either, um, especially me having two black daughters and a black son. Um, have your parents given you any tips for how to handle the police if you're ever stopped? Yes, ma'am, they have. Um, what are those tips that you've been given? Uh, say yes, sir, no, sir. Be very clear when I'm talking to them. Uh, Make sure like I don't make like any sudden movements, like keep my hands up where they can see them, stuff like that. Yeah, that's so important. Um, you know, a lot of times when young black men are stopped by the police, they want to pop off at the mouth. And that's definitely not the course to go in the temperature of the world right now. So in in talking about police brutality, has one story affected you more than another when it comes to all these lives that have been taken away from us unrighteously? Uh, all of them have affected me. One story isn't greater than the other. They all affect me the same. How do you feel about the fact that the police officers, they get off scot-free, that they get to go home to their families, they're not serving any jail time, um, that they're like, woohoo, like basically I killed another black man, A-OK, -okay. because that's what it is really. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely frustrates me just how that could happen. like. If it was the other way around, I'm already knowing what's going to happen. But they basically just get to kill us and act like nothing even happened. I think for me, when it came to the murder of George Floyd and watching him call out for his mama, to me, that took something out of me as as a mother to an African-American child. And I could not imagine sitting there watching that take place and not do anything about it. Um, what do you feel about 
the rioting? Uh, I feel like the rioting was necessary. The people uh, are hurt. They're, we're angry, and it's getting us out there. So people people know that we're mad. Do you think it's wrong that we or they burnt down buildings and, and things like that? Uh, it's really just out of anger, out of all the stuff that's happening. Yeah, you know, a lot of times I've heard they shouldn't do that. But when you back people into a corner, they're either going to fight or flight. And I think that has been the way that we decided to fight. Um, because, you know, we handle things, Black folk I'm talking about, in a very civilized way a lot of times. But it seems like that doesn't get the attention of the media or of the world. But when you act in violence or things like that, that's when people start to listen. However, I feel, and you can tell me how you feel about this, God bless you, sweetie, that laws have to change. Do you think that we're in a position that laws are going to change? Uh, no. No, I don't think so either. What do you feel about mm -hmm. Donald Trump? Uh, I feel like he has to go. I would like to see him go too. But, you know, he's really operating strategically where he might be able to stay. How does that make you feel? Uh, it's definitely dangerous, but I feel like he's, he's trying to play his card right, so he can't stay. You know, I, um, I listened to someone. His name is Reverend Ike. He's he's dead. He's long gone. And he said something very powerful. He said a lot of times we look at the government to change our lives, but we have to personally change our lives. Do you feel the same way? Of course, uh, we definitely have to change. We definitely have to change our lives. That's the only way it's going to work. Yeah. Do you believe that everything starts in the mind? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We Do you know? Vote. Huh? I said we got to vote. We do have to vote. We do. Do you think your vote matters? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you're too young to vote. Yeah, so you're voting, you're voting through your parents? <laughs> no. Am I allowed to ask you who you're voting for? If, okay, if you had the opportunity to vote, who are you voting for? Uh, Biden. <laughs> okay. And why Biden? Uh, he can make a change. It's better than what we have right now. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about racism in America right now? Uh, it's always going to be racist in the world. That's true. Can't but you know what I love about young people? And this is all young people, white, black, Asian, brown people is that you all don't stand for the things that our ancestors stood for. Like the things that my mother or my grandmother stood for. You all are vocal and you don't mind having a voice and saying what your voice is. And I admire that because so many of us have been told to be quiet and your generation is sounding the alarm. 
and you're not putting up with all the things that was put up with in the past. What do you feel about that? Do you feel that it's changing? Uh, I don't think it's changing, but I do think we have to continue to use our voices and be louder and really get the attention of people. So in the chat, it says he's quite an intelligent young man, impressive conversation. So please know that people are really listening to you. And I think on today that you've added another part of BJ um, to your platform because you are quite intelligent. Um, you do have a voice. And I believe that by this interview that you'll also change people's lives. How does it make you feel knowing that you're going to change someone's life from today on? Uh, it makes me feel good about myself knowing that I could have that impact on someone to change their lives and uh, change the way how they see things. And it definitely makes me feel good. What is the greatest impact that you would love to have on society? Uh, just being able to uh, help people. Okay. In what aspect? Am I a hard interviewer? <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't say that. You just asked. Okay, like, okay. Okay, okay. So what's that impact? What does that look like for BJ? Um, I just want to be like known as like being a good person, helping people when they need it. Uh, okay. And giving back to the community. I love that. It's so important to go back and to give. Um, to the less fortunate and to those who are at risk. So I admire that about you. If you had a nonprofit organization, who would it focus on and why? Uh, education. I love it. I love it. That's important. Um, say that again. Education. Education in the inner city. Inner city, at risk youth. Yes, That's important. That's important to use your star power to give back because you would be allowed in communities that other people might not be able to get into because of name recognition and because of your branding. So always know your branding is very important. You know, even as you're in um, high school and then when you go to college and then when you go to the pros, your brand has to be solid. So if you didn't know, you know now. So what is your hope for at-risk young people? Uh, to be educated. Okay. And it starts in school. And it's okay, like LeBron. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Like I love that. I love that. Who's your favorite football player right now? Uh, yep. I, I have to say Cam Newton. Cam Newton. Okay. Why? Uh, just how. His story, like he was on the team, then they he is gone, and then his, his the grind he put in to get where he is now, it's really paying off for him, and you could tell that he really worked for it. Okay, okay. How do you feel about he how he dresses? <laughs> uh, that's just his style. That's 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 who he is. He's very eclectic, isn't he? Yes, no. Yeah, like some of his outfits, like I totally love. And then some of them, I'm like, 
Okay, Cam, what you got on? Yeah. <laughs> so, do you only play the position of a quarterback, or are there other positions that you can play as well? Uh, I can play other positions, but my main position is quarterback. Okay, okay. Regarding mom and dad, I know that they've invested a lot in you. Um, do you feel that you eventually owe them something? Yes, ma'am. Every time I go on the field. <laughs> so I have to ask you this because someone asked me, what is your ROI? Do you know what that is? <laughs> Number. Return on investment. <laughs> uh, definitely, probably millions. I love it. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you always have to take care of mom and dad. All right. Yes, you take care of those who've taken care of you. So I have to tell you this. So a lot of athletes, they feel that they owe, let's say, if you had like a group of friends around you and you went pro, they feel obligated to those friends. And, you know, that's their entourage. And, and they take these friends and they ball out with them and they buy them houses and cars and all that. Are you going to be that type of NFL player? That you just take care of the world? <laughs> nah, I don't think I'm going to be like y'all. I'm going to do it kind of like uh, LeBron did his friends. Like, he didn't get vacation, uh, focus on a career they really wanted, and then, like, he helped them out. Like, uh, his agent now, like, he made him go to college and get that degree, and then him out. Uh, he actually helped them out like that. So that's why he's his agent now. So, like, I would do that to my friends. Okay, so you make sure that you have a great <laughs> That's very important that you have a great agent. Matter of fact, um, there's a movie that I really want to look at again. I think it was Tom Cruise. Do you know what movie that is when he was the agent? Uh, yes, ma'am. What's the name of that movie? I forget. Jerry Maguire. That's it. I'm going to make it my business to go watch Jerry Maguire again. And the reason I am is because he cared. There's a lot of people out there who really won't care. You know, they, they, they get you and they get your money, but then they kind of like leave you high and dry. So you make sure that when you are at the point of getting an agent, that you get someone that really cares about you, cares about your story and cares about your future. Make sense? Yes, ma'am. And get you I'm those. In my look, look, that's right. Keep your eye on your money, baby. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like Oprah said, she knows where all her money goes. So you don't be like so many young men that have these people around and they give them the authority to kind of like rule their money. You let mom and dad, you know, look at everything and you look at everything and make sure you get a great, uh, financial advisor, you know, but make sure that you're keeping an eye on your money because a lot of athletes are broke at the end of their career. And they're like, oh my God, where'd my money go? But you've been paying all these people who didn't mean you any good. So money does matter. Yes, so as a player, and looking to go pro, what is a signing bonus? What does a signing bonus look like? What do you think it should look like? Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> uh, it just depends right now on how I have to. Okay, so in your career and trying to go pro, are you going to go pro as a quarterback? That's your goal? Yes, ma'am. So what about the fact that there's not a whole lot of black quarterbacks in the NFL? You think things will change? Uh, yes, ma'am. It's enough right now. We had okay. uh, 10 black quarterbacks starting. 10? I didn't know that. You just schooled me. Thank you. I like I like learning new things. So you just going to be another one added to the roster. But I have to tell you, you know, when you go pro and you be all big, don't forget about me. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Say that lady interviewed me. You know, I don't want no money or nothing, but I am a, a certified personal development life coach. So, you know, keep that in mind. Okay. Okay. Yes, my major is going to be so, broadcasting. Yeah, say that again. I said my major is going to be broadcasting. Nice. Okay. Broadcasting and journalism. Yes, ma'am. That's hot. So you want to be in the media as well? Yes, ma'am. Won't you start doing interviews now? Uh, my schedule's too tight right now. Okay, okay, okay. Man, I love that. I love the fact of having my own platform and being able to just communicate with wonderful people such as yourself. I think that's so important, especially since we live in a virtual world. Now, do you ever go on um, IG and communicate with people there, like do lives? Uh, sometimes. Okay. So you have time to do, you know, live interviews, 10 minutes. Oh, I, if it's just my friends all doing it or something like that. Okay, okay, okay. Nice, nice. So anyway, when you go to work out, what do you focus on? Uh, like as far as like what I'm trying to work out? Yeah, as far as like your body. What does a workout look like for you? Uh, it just depends on the day, really, like, if we're doing, uh, arms, I okay. do, like, bench, uh, stuff like that, like, curls, uh, it just depends on, like, what we're doing that day. Okay, how long do you spend in the gym? Uh, about an hour. An hour, do you think that's enough time? Because I spent about an hour and a half to two hours in the gym, so do you think an hour is enough? Do I need to change? Uh, I feel like an hour is a good a good workout time. Okay. All right. So I'm going to have to re-strategize, you know, my little workout schedule to, to do an hour. Because I think for me, working out is more of a mindset and my time to think. You know, that's when I cut everything off and I just focus on being in the moment. Because life is so busy, you know. So, again, tell my listening audience who DJ Higgins is and how phenomenal he is. Uh, uh, don't be shy. Describe myself. Yeah, don't be shy. Just tell them who you are. You're your school with number, quarterback, just anything and everything that you would want my listening audience to know about you. This is your opportunity uh, to, to shine. Uh, I'm Jay Higgins, class of 2022 quarterback at Dallas Roosevelt High mm -hmm. School, uh, number seven, and um, 16. 
So BJ, I have to ask you, do you have like a certain a certain dance on the field? You know, like when you're a touchdown, huh? I don't really have a dance on the field. I do get like excited and stuff, but I don't really have a signature dance or anything. Oh, you got to come up with a signature dance. Yeah, I got to work on that. Yeah, you know, so us old folk can do it <laughs> or try to do it. <laughs> yes, we, we like to dance too, okay? <laughs> Okay. You know, so that could be a part of branding yourself. What's the next after, game that after, you play? Uh, this Friday against okay. Quinlan Ford. You ready? Yes, ma'am, I'm ready. Now, I have to ask, do you all wear the mask when you're playing? I don't know. I wear a mask uh, in, high, in high school. I wear a visor, though. Okay, okay. I actually bought a visor, too, because um, I want people to see my lipstick. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, with the mask, it just takes off my lipstick, and I'm like, my lipstick is nice. I want, you know, it matches my outfit. So. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a logo already for your brand? No, ma'am, I don't have a logo yet. You should get a logo. See, I'm always thinking business. Oh, yeah, I have to work like that. I'm always thinking business, branding, money how people can be great. And I believe that you have greatness in you and I believe that you are great. And I think you could even take your greatness to another level, even at this age. Maybe you could be my agent. Did your mama just say that? Uh-uh. <laughs> Well, we'll talk about it. I'm good at what I do. I have to say that. <laughs> but yeah, take BJ to another level. So BJ, tell people how they could connect with you on your social media pages. Uh, you could follow me on Twitter at BJ Higgins QB or Instagram 7BJ.Higgins. Woo! BJ, you have been phenomenal. Is there anything that you want to say that I haven't asked you or that you have on your mind right now? Uh, I just want to tell everybody to get out and vote. Get out and vote, people. Have you heard this young man? BJ Higgins, quarterback for Dallas Roosevelt High School says, get out and vote. Why? Because your vote matters. Am I right, BJ? Yes, ma'am. Well, BJ, I would like to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to you and thank you to your phenomenal parents um, for allowing you to grace my stage with your presence. Um, I believe that you have so much to offer as a young man to the world. And I know that your parents are proud of you. I don't know you personally, but I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you because you're grinding still, you, you're you doing your thing um, and you don't have to. You could have chosen a dif different path during COVID but you're sticking with your goals and you're sticking with the things that you enjoy. So that's phenomenal in itself. So I wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you um, for being on one-on-one -on -one with Sharon K. Griffin, AKA 
Madam Butterfly. You don't go anywhere, BJ. Um, and I'm going to come right back to you, okay? Hey, Butterflies. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for gracing BJ and me with your presence. Again, BJ Higgins, number seven, Dallas Roosevelt High School. He has learned to pivot in the midst of adversary, in the midst of COVID. He is a phenomenal young man that's humble and that's going places. So I want to encourage you to flap your wings. Yes, be that butterfly, live your authentic life and live a life of freedom. You are on one-on-one -on -one with Sharon K. Griffin, AKA Madam Butterfly. Because freedom costs you the bus, you're not lost. Cause